Good day everyone and welcome to another video brought to you by RootTube. In today's video the focus will be on index laws 3 and 4 which builds on the knowledge in a previous video I created which focused on index laws 1 and 2. The four learning objectives for today's video, um, two relating to the third index law and two relating to the fourth index law. So the first one is to develop an understanding of the third index law. Then once we have that understanding then we should hopefully be able to uh, simplify algebraic expressions using that third index law and then similarly for the fourth index law first of all we're going to develop an understanding of it and then simplify algebraic expressions using it okay so everything's centered around the third in and the fourth index law for this video okay index law three so the third index law states that a to the power of zero equals one and it's as simple as that anything to the power of zero does equal one that's what the third index law tells us Okay, you might think, oh gee, that's really simple. And it is, but as we proceed through uh, today's video, you'll see that it can get tricky from time to time, especially when we introduce um, brackets. Okay, so the base understanding is that anything to the power of zero is equal to one. Now, like I said, this seems quite simple, but this is often where a lot of students make errors because of how simple they think it is. Okay, so in a lot of cases when dealing with the third index law it is quite simple but like I said it can get a little bit complex and errors can get made especially when the brackets come so let's have a look let's have a look at these few first examples so simplify the following x to the power of 0 equals what well remember the index law 3 tells us that anything to the power of 0 equals 1 and that includes variables so therefore x to the power of 0 equals 1 not a too difficult beginning. Next, we move on to seven to the power of zero. Okay, the index law three says that once again, anything to the power of zero equals one. And that goes with numbers, including integers. Okay, so once again, that is equal to one. You might think, gee, this is going quite easy. Now let's move on to the third one. So three X to the power of zero. Now it's really important that you can identify what that zero belongs to. Okay, that's zero, that zero power or the index belongs to the x okay so in this case x is the base and zero is the index or the exponent or the power okay and the three is what's called a coefficient okay so really if we were to rewrite three x to the power of zero it would look like this we've got three multiplied by x to the power of zero so once again the most important thing that you need to identify here and i might just highlight it is that the zero only belongs to the x the zero does not belong to the three so now, if we do some working out, we know that anything to the power of 0 equals 1. So therefore, we've got our 3, and we're going to multiply x to the power of 0. Well, we did that in the first part, x to the power of 0 equals 1. So therefore, 3 times 1 equals 3. Okay, so often people just think whenever you see an x to the power of 0, the answer is always 1. Okay, the answer is not always 1, or it might be 1, but there might be some other working in the question, just like this one. Okay, so the first one, x to the power of 0 equals 1. Second one, 7 to the power of 0 equals 1. And the third one equals 3. All right, let's have a look at some more questions relating to the third index law. So simplify the following. Now we have 5x to the power of 0. So really similar to the question that we just saw previously. Only difference is, and like I said before, the brackets. Okay, the brackets change things. Okay, now, like I did before, I'm going to highlight what the zero belongs to. Okay, because we had the five and then the x to the power of zero before with no brackets, the zero only belonged to the x. But with the brackets, the zero belongs to everything inside of the brackets. Okay, so the zero belongs to the x and it belongs to the five. So the zero belongs to the five x. So that means anything to the power of zero just equals one. So therefore, the whole bracket is equal to 1. Now, moving along, we've got negative 4y to the power of 0 plus 2. Okay, hopefully you'll be able to identify what the power of 0 belongs to. So once again, we've got no brackets. The 0 only belongs to the y. It does not belong to the negative 4. Okay, so if we write this out, it's going to look like negative 4 multiplied by y to the power of 0 plus 2. Now we know that 
anything to the power of zero equals one. That's what the index law tells us. So therefore it's negative four times one plus two. And then we can just use our order of operations knowledge to work our way through. So we've got negative four multiplied by one plus two. We always start with multiplication if it comes before addition. So negative four times one or anything times one just equals itself, which becomes negative four and then negative four plus two Okay, if you need to use a number line, please do so. Or if you have a calculator, we're going to be getting closer to zero, which should become negative two. There's our answer there. And then the last one, let's rewrite what we have. So we've got five and then in brackets, a, b to the power of zero. Now, once again, you really need to know what the zero belongs to. Because there's a bracket, just like the first part, the first uh, question on the slide, we need to know that the zero belongs to the A and the B. Okay, so that means the whole bracket equals one. That zero does not belong to the five. Okay, so let's write out what we have. We've now got five multiplied by, and then in brackets, AB to the power of zero. So then we've now got five multiplied by AB to the power of zero. Well, we know anything to the power of zero equals one. So therefore, five times one equals five. And now we proceed to index law four. So the fourth index law states that a to the power of m to the power of n equals a to the power of m times n. Okay, so what does that mean? Okay, so essentially what it means is when you are raising a power to another power, in this case, in the example m and n, what you need to do is you need to keep the base the same, which is a, and you need to multiply the, uh, the indices or the powers. That's what index law four says. So this one often gets confused with index law one because it's all to do with multiplication. But as we know from index law one, we keep the base the same and then we add the indices. But index law four, when we have a power raised to another power, we need to multiply the indices. Okay, if you're not sure about index law one, I do recommend you go back and have a look at my previous video, which outlines index law one and two. Okay, let's have a look here. So we got seven to the power of four, all to the power of two. That's our first question here. So we could do this one of two ways. Okay, and I'm, a, I'm actually going to do both now. So if we have seven to the power of four, all to the power of two, the first way we could do it is we could have seven to the power of four multiply by seven to the power of four, because that to, that two, that index of two, just says how many times we have seven to the power of four multiplying each other, which then we can apply our index law one knowledge to then keep the bases the same and add the powers. So we have seven to the power of eight. That's the first way we could do it. Or well, the second way we could do it is how I explained previously with the index law four is we just simply multiply the indices. Okay, so we keep the base the same. So then we've just got seven to the power of four all to the power of two equals seven to the power of four times two, which equals seven to the power of eight. Now you'll see we get the same answer both ways, okay? Both will get you the right answer every way, but in a case where you've got a big, uh, a large power, okay, which we'll see in the upcoming example, the blue method, the second method is foolproof, okay? So I do advise you always go with the blue method, but the black, the black method also works every time, okay? So that's there for you. So the correct answer should be seven to the power of eight. A common error would be, to add the indices to make it seven um, to the power of four plus two, which would be seven to the power of six, that's incorrect. Okay, so we need to multiply the indices as the index law says. Now moving on, m to the power of two or m squared all to the power of 12. Now I'm not going to do it because it's gonna take me forever, but how I could write it is I've got m squared times m squared times m squared times m squared and so on, 12 times. That's another way of writing what is written there. But we don't want to do that. That's why the fourth index law was created to simplify things, okay? So what we can do is, and like I said before, when you've got a big power, that actually creates more work. But we're in, we're in the job here, or our job is to simplify, and we don't want to do that, okay? We want to make things a little bit easier for ourselves. So what we're going to do, as we did previously, just keep the base the same and multiply the indices. So we've now got m squared all to the power of 12 equals m to the power of two 
multiply by 12, which should hopefully become m to the power of 24. Again, a really common error would be to add those, so which you would then get the answer of m to the power of 14. But again, that would be incorrect, but it's a really common incorrect answer. And then finishing off with the last one, okay, I won't do the longer method because once again, I've got a really long or really big power of seven. So we're just gonna go with the blue method, all right? So here we've got a to the power of three all to the power of seven. Again, we're raising a power to another power. So we're gonna multiply the indices, which becomes a to the power of seven times three, which should be 21. So all we are doing is multiplying. And again, you may have guessed it, a common error would be a to the power of 10. All right, I'm finishing this video off. Let's finish off with some more index law for simplifying questions. So simplify the following a squared b cubed all to the power of four. So again, we need to simplify through index law four because we're raising a power to another power. Or in this case, we're raising two powers to another power. Okay, so we've now got a to the power of two all to the power of four. So essentially what we've got is we've got a to the power of two, if I break this question down, all to the power of four, which is then going to be a to the power of two multiplied by four, which then gives us a to the power of eight. Once again, an incorrect answer, a common incorrect answer would be a to the power of six. And then the second part, we're gonna do the Bs now, which is now b to the power of three, all to the power of four. So we've now got b to the power of three, all to the power of four, which is once again multiplied, oops, should be three times four. Won't change the answer, but write it in the right order, which can be b to the power of three multiplied by four, which is then gonna be b to the power of 12. And then we can bring down our answer, which will become a to the power of eight, b to the power of 12. And there's our answer. Now we get introduced to um, the coefficient. Okay, so now we've got two a squared all to the power of three or all cubed. Now, what we need to do is we need to deal with the coefficient first. Okay, so now what we need to do, and this is where it can get a little bit tricky, is we've got two to the power of three, not two times three. So what we do with the coefficient two and the index two are very different, and we'll see in a second. So the coefficient two is two to the power of three, which is just two times two times two, which should be eight. Again, a common error would be six. And then we have a to the power of two or a squared all to the power of three, which then becomes a to the power of two times three, which is then a to the power of six. So you can see how with the coefficient two, we're raising it to the power of three, but then with the a squared and the three, we're then gonna multiply the indices, which then gives us our answer of 8a to the power of 6. And then the final question for this video is, we've now got a fair few different things that we need to do. Let's start with the coefficient, which is 7. Okay, so we've now got 7 to the power of 2. Okay, which again, the common error would be 14, but it's not 7, to, seven times 2, it's 7 to the power of 2, which is just 7 times 7 which will be 49. And then I'll just keep changing colors. Now we're gonna apply the E for all the E's. So we've now got E to the power of five, all to the power of two, which then becomes E to the power of five times two, which then becomes E to the power of 10. And now we can use our R's so then now we've got r to the power of two or r squared all to the power of two, which then becomes r to the power of two times two, which then becomes r to the power of four, that should say. And then the final one, we have our q's. So we now have q to the power of four all to the power of two. So you'll see that two belongs to everything inside the bracket, the coefficients, the E's, the R's, and the Q's. So we've now got Q to the power of four multiplied by two, 
which then becomes q to the power of 8. And then once again, we can collate everything and write our answer with the coefficient at the front. So we've now got 49, and then in alphabetical order, which it already is, almost. So we've then got 49, e to the power of 10, then q, because we're writing in alphabetical order, and then r to the power of 4. There is our answer. Thanks again for watching another video brought to you by Rootube. Hopefully you learnt a thing or two about index laws 3 and 4. If you did, feel free to like the video and subscribe to my channel as I will be uploading some more content in the near future. Catch you next video.